Good evening and welcome to our study of the book of Matthew. So far, we have studied the advent of the king, or the coming of the king. This included the lineage of the king, the birthday of the king, the worship of the king, and the protection of the king. Today I would like us to study Matthew chapter 3 about the herald of the king. I'm reading to you from Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is, has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice calling of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptized, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee the, wrath, the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe has, is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I baptize, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as John was baptized, sorry, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Lord, we pray that you will bless this reading of your word, and bless us as we study this your word. Help us to understand it, and apply its truths to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to see three groups or individuals or groups of individuals who came to the desert during this time. I want you to notice that it says in those days. When Matthew says in those days, he's talking about a 30-year gap be approximately 30 years between when the Magi went home and uh, Mary and Joseph went to Nazareth with the little child Jesus, and now Jesus has grown up, John the Baptist has grown up, and now we come to the desert, the wilderness of Judea in those days, and there are three groups or individuals that come. The first one is John the Baptist himself. 
John the Baptist came preaching in the desert, verses 1 to 6. He came to proclaim the word of God, verses 1 and 2. And while he was proclaiming the word of God, he emphasized the need for repentance. What is repentance? Repentance means a 180 degree turn. You're going in one direction and you realize that you're going the wrong way. So you make a 180 and you go in the complete opposite direction. That means repentance, a change of mind, a turn of direction. He, John the Baptist emphasized the need for repentance. But he also emphasized the kingdom of heaven. Heaven was understood to be the place or the dwelling place of God. So for, the, for Matthew, the kingdom of heaven was synonymous with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is everywhere that God is in charge. God is in charge of the universe. God is in charge of our lives. God is in charge of the people who submit to him and to his lordship. So John the Baptist was emphasizing repentance and the kingdom of God, the place where God ruled, the kingdom of heaven. So he came preaching the word of God. He also came, verse 3, to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, we are given a prophecy about the coming of Jesus, or sorry, about the coming of John the Baptist. Isaiah said, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Isaiah wrote about where John would preach. Isaiah had the understanding from God that this person would preach in the wilderness, in the desert. He would be a voice calling in the desert. Isaiah also wrote about what John would preach. He would preach about preparing the way for the Lord, preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah, make straight paths for him. So John the Baptist came to proclaim the word of the Lord. He came to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. And he came to remind the people of Elijah. He did this by what he wore. I want you to notice in verse 4, John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. Why does Matthew take time to mention those details? Well, I want you to remember that Matthew is writing to a primarily Jewish congregation or group of people. And the Jewish people knew their Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, people were asking about uh, th this prophet that was coming to them and the king asks in 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 7, the king asked them, What kind of a man was it who came to meet you and told you this? And they replied, He had a garment of hair and had a leather belt around his waist. And the king said, That was Elijah the Tishbite. The, the garment of hair and the leather belt around the waist was a symbol, uh, an identifying mark for Elijah. So John the Baptist comes and he's wearing the same kind of clothes, clothes made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He is coming to remind the people of Elijah. He did this by what he wore, but he also did this by what he ate. I want you to see the last part of verse 4. His food was locust and wild honey. That also was what Elijah the Tishbite ate. 
His food was the food not of a king at a royal feast or a banquet table. His food was the food of a wild man living in the desert. So he reminded the people of Elijah, but he also came to prepare the way for the Messiah. Look at verses 5 and 6. Many people who lived in Jerusalem and the surrounding area came out of Jerusalem, came out of their cities and out of their towns to hear John preach. This is a fascinating subject. John didn't go into the city to reach them. He was doing God's work in the desert, and in the desert, people heard about what John was doing in the cities, and they came out to the desert to hear John preach. And when they came out to the desert, they were willing to confess their sins. What does it mean to confess? To confess means to say the same thing as. So if God says that your sins are wicked, if God says that your sins cannot be tolerated, if God says your sins cost the blood of his precious son who died on the cross, then to confess your sins is to say the same thing about your sins as God does. They're not fun. They're not uh, an exciting outing. They are something for which a price has to be paid, blood has to be shed for the remission of sins. And to confess their sins means they said the same thing about them that God says about them. By the way, do you say the same thing about your sins that God does? Or have you made excuses for your sins? Have you made friends of your sins? Or are you willing to confess your sin and say the same thing that God says about them? So the people went out to hear John the Baptist preach. They were willing to confess their sins. And they were willing to be baptized by him. Baptism was a symbol of identification. By being baptized by John, they were willing to identify with his ministry, a ministry of calling people to repentance, a ministry of calling people to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. So we read that John came, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert. But there was a second group of characters that came to the desert at that time. We read about them in verses 7 to 12. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to where John was. When John saw them coming, John rebuked these leaders. He questioned their motivation. I want you to see how he characterized them. He called them, you brood of vipers. That's another way of saying, you bunch of snakes. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? He characterized them as a bunch of snakes who were escaping a grass fire. He questioned them. He says, what are you trying to get away from? Are you, why are you trying to flee the coming wrath of God? And he says, if you folks are sincere, if you really want to get right with God, then you will produce fruit in keeping with repentance. In other words, your lifestyle will change. If you really are wanting to turn from going the wrong way to going the right way, then you are going to have to show it by a change in your lifestyle. Your mind changes, and when your mind changes, your heart changes, and when your mind and heart change, your feet are going to walk in a different direction. John says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Be consistent. And then he confronted some of their assumptions in verse 9. 
Do not assume that you are superior to others. You go around saying, we have Abraham as our father. We are Jewish people. We are chosen. We are special. But John the Baptist says, don't make yourself think that you are more special than other people. God can replace you with other, with other people. In fact, John says that God is able to raise up children for Abraham out of these stones, in verse 9. Then he warned them of impending judgment. He said to them that their time was limited. Look at what he says. The axe, verse 10, is already at the root of the trees. When an axe is laid to the root of the tree, that means the preparation is happening. The, the axe is being prepared to cut that tree down. Your time is limited. The axe is already positioned to cut you down. Your sentence is sure. If you do not produce fruit that, le that shows repentance, you will be burned in the fire of God's judgment. You will be thrown into the fire. Then John explained his ministry. And when John explains his ministry in verses 11 and 12, I think that he may be speaking past the Pharisees to the people who are coming to be baptized. He told them what he was doing. I baptize you with water for repentance. John had a very specific ministry, and his ministry was to have people repent and prepare them for the coming of the Messiah. And he says, that's why I'm baptizing you. And he told them why he was doing it. Verses, the last part of verse 11 and verse 12. One is coming after me. There's a Messiah coming. And he is more powerful and more worthy than I am. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There will be another kind of baptism. He will not have the same kind of baptism that I do. That I, do. I only baptize with water for repentance. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then he will gather the wheat together and he will burn the chaff. This is what God the Holy Spirit is going to do when the Messiah comes. And he says, you better get ready. That is my job to prepare you for the coming of the Messiah. So John the Baptist came to the desert preaching. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to where John, John was and John warned them that they were going in the right, wrong direction. And then thirdly, Jesus came to the Jordan to be baptized. John the Baptist had a discussion with Jesus. In verse 13, we find out that Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan. The last time we heard about Jesus was when, in chapter 2, he went to live in the town of Nazareth, and uh, he lived there in the district of Galilee with his parents. Now we find Jesus coming from that district of Galilee to the area in Judea, where the Judean wilderness, where John was baptizing. And John, or Jesus, wanted to be baptized by John. But John didn't know about this. He protested. He said, I am the one who really needs to be baptized by you. And why do you come to me? He had an honest question for Jesus. He knew that he was to prepare the way for Jesus, but now that Jesus had come, he wanted to be the first one to be baptized. But Jesus reassured John. He said, let it be so now, 
For it is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, John, this is the right thing for me to do. This is the right thing for you to do. I need to be baptized by you. Have you ever, have you ever wondered why Jesus needed to get baptized? As I've mentioned before, baptism means identification with. And when we as Christians get baptized, we are identifying with Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. But when Jesus was baptized, he was doing the exact opposite. Jesus, the God-man, was identifying with humanity. Jesus got baptized to identify himself with us. Jesus is the holy, pure Son of God, but Jesus was identifying himself with sinners, which was prophesied that he would. He was identifying with sinners so God could place all of our sin on him and he became the sin bearer for all of us so that he could pay our penalty and we could be set free. Jesus' baptism was the exact opposite of our baptism. We aren't baptized the way Jesus was. Jesus was baptized to identify with us. We are baptized to identify with him. I want you to notice that even though John the Baptist had a discussion with Jesus, God the Father made a declaration about Jesus in verse 16 and 17. Jesus was baptized in verse 16, and then he went up out of the water. And as soon as he came up out of the water, heaven opened. And uh, the Spirit of God was descending from heaven like a dove, and it landed on Jesus. And, and John the Baptist heard a voice from heaven that said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus knew that he had to obey the Father by getting baptized. And now that Jesus had obeyed his Father, God shows his approval. He says, that a boy, well done. This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I want you to note that all three members of the Trinity were involved in the baptism of Jesus. God the Son was coming up out of the water. God the Spirit was descending from heaven like a dove, and God the Father was the voice that spoke from heaven. John the Baptist had a unique ministry. He was called by God to minister for only a few years and only for one purpose. His ministry was to prepare the way for the Messiah to come. His ministry was to get people baptized for repentance of their sins. His ministry was to identify who Jesus was and to baptize Jesus so that Jesus could be identified with sinful humanity even though he was the holy and pure Son of God. John the Baptist had a unique ministry, but Christians do have something in common with him. We are, we are to be heralds of the coming of Jesus, his second coming. Just like John the Baptist was a herald or an announcer of the first coming of Christ, so we are to be heralds of the second coming of Christ. Jesus is coming again. Are you ready? Have you repented of your sins? Have you been baptized 
to identify yourself with Jesus Christ, the only one who offers salvation to a needy world? If you have repented and been baptized and are following Jesus, then you are ready for his return. And if you are ready for his return, you need to become another John the Baptist and invite other people and announce the coming of Jesus and invite other people to come along with us and prepare the way for Jesus to come again. My prayer is that for you and for myself in this new year, we will take the cue from John the Baptist, that we will be people who will announce the coming of Jesus. We will live our lives in obedience to his holy will, and we will prepare the way for the second coming. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, I ask you to help each one who is listening to understand that in a sense they are to take the cue from John the Baptist, that they are to be humble proclaimers of your word, that they are to be examples of your followers and they are to announce your coming and urge people to prepare and to get ready by repenting of their sins and putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who is the only one and true Messiah, King, for a world that's in desperate need. We pray that you will help us to that end. In Jesus' name, amen.